Hello everybody, this is Bearclaw Ben with the 8th part of my Super Mario Sunshine LP. Last time we came across this uh, egg, and it's thinking of bananas. Sweet dreams. So, it's telling us that we need bananas. And, uh, I think bananas are over here. I think. Ah! Um, yeah, I think they're at the end stall right here. So close, so close. I really picked a good spot to catch Shadow Mario last time. So, uh... Well, I'm stupid. Well, So, my capture cable broke. Uh, okay. My capture cable broke, um, because I'm using the Elgato capture cable, and the USB jack is extremely... It's made of rubber, and it's extremely susceptible to bending. Anyways, so... You befriended a Yoshi! Make him eat with B. Yeah, that's all the instructions they give you. Really? See the bottom that says juice? Well, Yoshi squirts juice, but he also uses up juice as he goes along. And if you notice of what I just did, when he eats different fruits, he becomes different colors. Later, the colors will actually serve a purpose, but right now they're just for fun. So, jalapenos turn him purple, or peppers. And bananas turn him pink. Pears turn him orange. So do no. Wait. Yeah, they, those both turn him orange. That one turns him pink, and this one turns him purple again. He can And also, another function of the Yoshi is the double jump or flutter kick or whatever you want to call it. But with the Yoshi also arrives a new stage or a level we can use. Remember this bin or this uh, pineapple that was blocking the pipe? It's gone. You may ask what's inside this pipe? Well, I'm about to take you through the world. Bear claw man. Okay. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. This is Serena Beach. And the first episode is the Manta Store, considered by many to be a very tough level, when in reality, I, in my personal opinion, it's not that bad. I have to admit, in my earlier days, it was hell, but not much anymore, you know? Because in my earlier days, uh, I'll get to that next time, but, or next, bleh, I'll get to that next time. Well, anyways, you see that the goop here is electrical. What happens when you touch it? Yeah, probably should have expected that. But, let's go ahead and clean off the nookies. Many thanks, Mario. Oh, we don't want to collect that. What about you? Hopefully yours is like a one-up. Thanks, my friend. No! Stop giving me blue coins, that's for next time! Not even for next time, actually. But, show. Let us just go over here. And you'll find, if you clean off this... Uh, well, you, well, it really doesn't matter what you do now. You can do that little spin move I just did by just um, spinning the control stick and then pressing R. Get to that. And let's talk to this gentleman. Oh, please tell me my nightmare is over. Please help me. I don't know why, but you just look very capable to me. Listen, it all started around noon. This giant mantis shaped thing showed up. It was paper flint, thin, floating silhouette. It came and covered my hotel grounds in electric goop. Then, oh, the horror of my beautiful hotel, my poor building. It sank into the middle of that awful ooze. Why me? Why? Now I've got the staff cleaning up, but where's my hotel? What am I supposed to do? I can't just sit back and- ah, He's back! That gossamer ghoul! Do something! With the introduction of one of the only Super Mario Sunshine bosses never to make another appearance. And definitely one of the most feared. Yes, this is one of those rare instances where we get a boss who is fairly easy to come across, but fairly hard to combat. 
He was right about the paper thin part in Electra. But what he wasn't right about is that this thing can go over any surface. And if you spray water on it, it breaks up. This doesn't make it, this actually makes it more of a threat. As the larger one we can see coming a mile away, these can easily corner us. So here's our dilemma. What to do? Well, there's many ways to go about it. Ah! One of them is not going in there. The one most commonly used is going by the sea, but I think that's just terribly bland. So I'll just use my tried and almost true way of getting this enemy done. Simply keep on moving. That's my advice if you want to try to stay out of the ocean. When you keep moving, you have that mobility advantage that, although it may seem these guys have it because it can go on any surface, you still have the advantage because you move faster. Another tactic to try, and what I always did when I played this game when I was younger, was stay under here. Because they cannot enter this. It's under a surface, which means that they go on the surface rather than below it where you are. It's an okay method, but it's long. So I want to get this done really quick. So I think the easiest way is just hovering over all of them. Of course I am running low on water. Ah, uh, just refill. Okay. But, see, even in the water these things can still hurt you and are still a threat. And you do lose your mobility advantage in the water. Although you do have an infinite supply of water to work by, is it worth it? Is it worth the mobility? I always say no, but that's only because I probably don't even know how to do it in the correct way. There must be some sort of trick on that one. But, even so, tactics are really important in this fight. You can't just go about Monkey Dory spraying everywhere because then one will come up behind you and before you know it, you'll be down like to one bar of little health and you won't be able to do anything about the advancing raids. Make sure you don't get hit, obviously, with any fight, and there are coins in case you do get hit. Make sure you spend the least amount of time on the ground as possible unless you're running away, which it's encouraged because you, again, are faster than them on land. Don't do stupid things like I just did. Just stick to the fundamentals of this game. Spray and pray and run. It can be a, it's actually a very easy fight if you just think about um, ground to cover and also uh, how fast you want to do things. What I just did there is I did a spin. Uh, what I just did a while ago, I did a something that I'm surprised I could do myself, which is spinning in air. Oh, oh. Which is spinning in air and then switching to hover nozzle to support myself. Now, don't do that because I'll probably not work. And show. With this, we only we are almost done with the fight, actually. You may not be convinced, but now is where usually most players die. Simply because now you have a bunch of small rays, but the problem is they are all coming after you. They recognize you as a threat and they are now looking at you. I was just tossed around like, oh, see, now this is why the fight's so challenging right now. Try to go in the water, they can't follow you out very far, which is why a lot of people use this tactic. But as you can see, they're still more or less actively pursuing you. So I gotta make my way back. But, see, now I'm doing the exact same thing I warned other people not to. I'm getting down to a very bare minimum of lives, or health, and I'm now scrambling around, gosh, to find something to sustain me. Of course, this is where I would usually retreat to under here. 
but it only has a limited amount of coins. And although I'm fully healed now, what about later? Now, from here you can just spray out and hopefully get some. And this usually does work. You usually do get some of it. Now, instead of doing the big, you know, instead of staying in one place, I always find it easier to watch commentary videos when the person is actually doing something and not just staying still. So I'm going to try to get this done really quick. For y'all viewers. Even if there's only like six of them. It's that. And two. Also, knowing how much your hover nozzle can put out is very important. Your hover nozzle can keep you off the ground for a while, but it's not nearly as long as it. Oh no. As long as you would want it for the fight. It gets to some water really quickly. I'm not, I'm not moving nearly quick enough right now. Oh, boy. But I believe some... Yes. Just as I run out of water. Here is a good supply of water if you're far away from the ocean. So you can either use the ocean, either recommended, or if you're far away from that area, you can use the hotel itself. And definitely don't do what I just did right there. Because as you can see, he goes right up there. But if they're in the surface, you can't hit them like this. It doesn't work like that. But now he's got me cornered. All I can do is run. Now this fight is always going to be at least a little bit long. At least, you know, a couple minutes. If someone did a speedrun of this, of course it would be ridiculous, but that's because speedrunners have certain tactics, certain tactics that they use, that they employ to give them those amazing, unbelievably good times while doing battle battles. I'm not using any speedrunning tactics that I know of. This, this would be a fight where I'd imagine it's extremely hard to do a speedrun of very quickly, simply because of how many um, enemies you have to deal with at once. It's a matter of, of quantity versus quality. In most fights you have, boss fights, you have maybe only one enemy, but is definitely um, harder to kill than all of these. But, as you can tell, there's a considerably larger quantity of these rays, making it extremely harder. I'm getting my ass handed to me. Oh boy. And right now I'm just taking refuge under here, but I really gotta get to work. Usually I'd be done by now, but I don't know. I just want to make this better for the viewers. For all y'all out there. It's really boring to watch someone just standing up on the whole time. As you guys probably know. So we're running low on water, let's get out into here. To refuel. Now at a certain point in Serena Beach, and all of these people are some sort, you will hit the invisible wall. It will come up soon and will make you drown. But it's far out. Which means from here, this is what usually people do. But remember, they can follow you. As you can see, they're patiently waiting for you. Well, maybe not patiently, but... But now I have a very good idea about how many rays are left. There's not a lot. This is really where I would say, go ahead, spray, and spray. This is the last one. No, there's not more. But when I got him in a concentrated area like this, hover away. That's my only advice to you. And of course, stay off the ground. Now let's finish this guy off. Oh! That one got me. Tough battle, not possible. And as you can see, all the group disappears, and the hotel is revealed. Slowly. Really slow.
cool part about um actually you know what let's uh take the rest of you to admire the scenery because i don't know i'm like 15 minutes in and i'm gonna be honest with you i don't want to i don't think i have time actually to record anything else so we're just gonna explore the outside area don't worry we'll get in and of course exploring also means going up a level i don't know there's probably somewhere you can get up to the third level. I don't know it. Sorry. In fact, it's probably a hack, just judging by the difference in altitude from the second and third. But, as you can see, this is the Serena Hotel. Hotel Delfino. And as you look out, that's beautiful scenery. You can see the silhouette. The shadow of Pina Park over there, nice and and even the windmills or the um, Ferris wheel spinning as you can see over here. Right? Just some beautiful animation right here. Some beautiful computer design, getting every detail right. I gotta say that's what I admire about this game is that for 2003, this game is truly groundbreaking. In really every sense of the word, at least what I'd consider a Nintendo game to be groundbreaking. And over there you can see Corona Mountain, or Corona Volcano. As we jump off and go over here, and this is another place where you could have uh, gotten some water during the fight. So just to keep in mind, let's talk about this janitor. Man, he is busy. Hope my pants survive. The ordeal intact. Oh boy, that's nice. Let's talk to these angry people. Hey, what is this? Is this the prank? Is this a prank? Don't try to fool me. What? The hotel's back? That's just crazy. Man, you guys were complaining that it disappeared. Now you're complaining that it's back. Oh. I don't know why, but this is a safe place. <laughs> yep. Talk to you. Owner on the roofs. I oh, didn't get drenched in slime. Good tactic. Let's check out you two are. Oh yeah, all the goop left. Well, who knows? Maybe it's beginning to turn. Let's hope so. I actually think I see Ray at home. Well, good. I do too. So let's get this big old shine and move back to. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention there are coins on the trees. They give you a lot of health in this. So you probably could have been a bit more giving with the light. So let's get the shine and get out. Yahoo! Thank. Wait. Maybe there's something waiting for us at Delfino Plaza. I doubt it. But worth checking out. Nope, nothing. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. This is the eighth part. And part 9 will be out very shortly. Very shortly. Before we go, let's just, uh... Let's just, uh... I don't know what I'm doing. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll be back with part 9.